right now. Pittsburgh's best sports show is about to begin. Call us or tweet us. We've got things to talk about on the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. Powered by FanDuel Sportsbook. And thank you very much to our good friend, Kim Gable. Welcome to the Island Contracting Nightly Sports Call, powered by FanDuel Sportsbook. I'm your host, Josh Taylor, in tonight for Bob Pompiani. And joining me in studio from the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, also has his own show on 93.7 The Fan, Paul Zeiss joining me. Paul, we got a lot to get to as far as, of course, Steelers and Ravens. We can talk about that. Penguins on the ice right now against Nashville. We'll get into that. Pitt wins the quick lane bowl last night. Perhaps the fashion of the ending of the game might be a point of discussion for some people. But um, do you want to talk about Antonio Brown first, or do you want to wait about that part? No, for, no, for God's let's sake. Let's get past that. Okay. Let's not talk about well, it. We'll skip past I figured I'd give you one uh, good shot at it. Okay, we'll skip past that. Let's start with, uh, let's start with the couple of the awards that were handed out today. Cam Hayward given uh, the Chief Award, and also Devin Bush given the Joe Green Award for Rookie of the Year. Now, the Devin Bush Award, plus the Cam Hayward Award, plus the T.J. Watt winning the team MVP, strong showing from the defense as far as the team awards this season. Well, we're used to seeing a lot of the offensive guys winning those awards. No, I mean, it, it, that's pretty obvious that's where the awards should go. Um, the one case I made last night was uh, um, for MVP when they, you know, it was Watt, and I get it and I understand it, but if you look at what Chris Boswell has done for this team, this is a team that can't score. <laughs> He's a guy that actually gave them points, and not just that. I mean, he was, you know, uh, 26. I think he's, I think he's 26 of 28 from the uh, from field goals. 28 from 30, actually. And, or, what, 28 of 30, 28 and 30. he's 20, what, 27 to 27 extra points. So yeah. he's had 57 placements, and he's made what? Uh, uh, he's 20, uh, 55 of them. And the only two he's missed were from longer than 45 yards. Right. So my point is, if he was lo what he did last year. This team probably hadn't been, you know, three and whatever. And, you know, I was on with Andrew Filipponi, uh, you know, on the air when we were going back and forth, and he was basically, well, these kicks weren't clutch kicks, but he's been the difference in at least four or five games. Okay, so it was in the first quarter, not the fourth. You know, I, and, I, and I go to, uh, for instance, the Arizona game. You know, they won 23-17, to 17, which right. my math is not great, but <clears throat> my math would suggest – that uh, 23 to 17, they won by six. Well, he scored, I think, eight points in that game. You know, that, I could go through every game that they've won in just about every one of them, except for who they beat, the Bengals, like 27 to three earlier or something. But for the most part, he's been a big part of every single. So he's the only non defensive guy I would make a case for. And I don't have a problem with TJ Watt. That's not what my point is. My point right. is, I mean, offensively, who would you give? Well, here, here I mean, Let's go with it like this. Who's the offensive MVP? That's a great question because at this point, Deontay Johnson, is he the guy? Is James it, Washington? Is it James Washington? Uh, it's hard to pick out between the two quarterbacks. I mean, are we really going to go Dave DeCastro? You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, really. To me, if your offensive MVP is an offensive lineman, unless it's a left tackle who's had an unbelievable season and given up zero sacks, uh, it's not good. But – I mean, that's the problem. Forget about team MVP. How about offensive MVP? Sticking with the lack of production, or if you want to go in the lack of man games in this particular case on offense, James Conner out yet again, that thigh that he injured against the Jets. Now you're going into a game against Baltimore. You don't have Marquise Pouncey. You don't have James Conner. You already don't have Mason Rudolph. He's out. You just talked about the offense not having a clear MVP. Now you look at what you're going to have as far as an offensive game plan. How are you going to score points against this Baltimore team? <sighs> Well, here's my dream scenario, just because it's, it'd be so much fun. <laughs> Hodges, you know, flames out by the end of the first quarter. They bring in Pax and Lynch. Oh, boy. He gets hot and throws for like 350 yards and six touchdowns, and everyone goes crazy. Why hasn't this guy been playing? So that, we would have a whole offseason of why hasn't this guy been playing? <laughs> that would be fun. That's just me. That. I know, I, I'm twisted, but that would be fun. As weird as this season has been, would it be that shocking? No, it wouldn't, but I'm just saying, I, 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 this team has been really difficult to watch at times, but they've been kind of fun because they, but, one, you know, a couple things. One thing I will say with all of this, you know, the 
Russell two weeks ago, was talking three weeks ago, was talking about uh, Tomlin's done the greatest job ever in the history of the league. I mean, come wow. on. That's, 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 that's a lot. One thing that's that needs lot. to be said is that the AFC being terrible has helped keep this team afloat. That is absolutely true. And I am not trying to diminish what they've done, but you look at the AFC, um, the teams below about the third team or fourth team in line are just not that good. And so that has helped. The Steelers have eight wins, and what's their signature win? Oh, the Rams? Who are eight and seven. <laughs> and they're already eliminated. And they're eliminated. I mean, it's entirely possible if the Rams lose and the Steelers lose, they'll be eight and eight and not have a single win, win over a team with a winning record. Oh, that's, oh, that's, that's really, really stark. Let's take a break. When we come back, we'll answer some phone calls. 412-575-2600 on the Board of Some Board of Hotline Plus. Taking your tweets at Josh Taylor HD. We'll do that when we come back. Stick around. The Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call is brought to you by Ireland Contracting, celebrating 25 years as Pittsburgh's number one home exterior expert in roofing, siding, windows, and gutters, where honesty and integrity still matter. 